James 1 and 13. Read it. Yes, sir. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Most High. Let no man say that when he's tempted or something happened bad, that God tempted you to make that choice. I said earlier that we're going to use wisdom or common sense to stay on this path going forward. We have to stop bringing God into our choices. Right? So many times if we're warned when it comes to certain decisions, automatically we began to trump people who are trying to give us wisdom by saying, I believe God is moving me in this direction. Right. Well, hey, if God is doing it, I'm definitely backing up. Right. <laughs> if you, but, but, but that's what they use so that no one can give them what? Critical advice, mm. constructive advice. They can stifle you by saying, because what can what can I say if I try to give someone advice and say they say they believe God is moving them in that direction? Mm. <laughs> okay. We have to stop doing that. Because in your conscience, you'll know whether or not it's a good or bad decision. Mm -hmm. And usually when you ask if you can do it, there's some doubt there. There's something that you're skeptical about within that particular scenario. If you have to ask about it, okay, <laughs> that's how it works. Your conscience is saying, wait, there's more details needed mm -hmm. before this decision. Mm. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> the most if you're not sure, don't try to don't jump into something. The most high is saying just be patient. It took me a long time to, a long while to work on you to get you from this point, from that point to where you are now. Don't go backward now. I know what you want and what you desire. But if it took you so much time by yourself to try to get this thing together for yourself. Why go backward? Wait and get more details. <laughs> Don't try to justify it by saying certain things to have other people believe what you hope will happen. If you understand what I'm saying, you hope it works out. So you are giving, you're painting this rosy picture for everyone else to get on board to say, yeah, go for it. Right. Understand that our God will never tempt a person. To make the wrong choice. Right. Never. But Satan will. So I'm saying that, folks, if when we are in that place where it's us in the most high alone and a decision is being made. A choice is being made on what to do in this life. Folks, you must weigh that decision with the word and you have to look at whether or not you did this before. Mm -hmm. And what was the consequences you suffered because of it? You have to weigh it with the word and say, hold up, I was here before. And what did I get out of it? Right? Right? Understand that the Most High is not going to put someone in your life that's going to do evil or wicked or hurt towards you. And I'm going to use that as an example. He would never do that. So if we made choices and those things happened, <laughs> it was our choice. That was our choice. It wasn't his choice. OK. Now, I wanted to get back on track here. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I have one. one other OK, come on. Point. Come on. And I don't know if you want to finish this out. Yeah, fin James, you can finish it out. Uh, James 1 and uh, four, or, uh, James 1 and 13. Come on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. For the most high cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. 
Come on. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. When he's drawn away of his own desires. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't care if mama tried to warn me. Mm -hmm. I don't care if father tried to warn me. I don't care what my best friend, I'll cut off my best friends. This is what I want right now. Mm -hmm. And then when they try to come in and say, just wait a little bit. And you will sit there and say, I believe God did this and God did that. And you don't understand. When the most high is really speaking through everyone around you who know you, warning you and saying, run now. Run. You cried on my shoulders the last time with this same scenario. Hmm. You cannot see because you have fallen over and over like this. You're not hmm. mature enough to overcome this yet. Depend on those who care for you and understand that this is going to knock you back five or ten years. Hmm. You cannot make this decision. Hmm. Because when you make that decision, guess what happens? You have made an agreement with Satan and what the most high had after this agreement, what he had for you, the next day walks right by you. Mm. It was there. You were this close and now you're back knocking yourself back five or 10 years with a bad decision. Mm. Right? And listen, I'm not equating it to any, I'm, if, if, if you notice, I'm using really any examples that all of us have experienced. Mm. You fill in the blanks because exactly. it applies in every area, folks. Exactly. <laughs> right? Well, come on, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse 15. Then when lust have conceived. It... When lust have conceived, the moment happened. Mm. Read. It bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth more sin. And sin when it is finished. And when sin is finished. It bringeth forth death. It bringeth forth death. And look what's going on in our communities right now, folks. Nothing but death, right? That's a product of many bad decisions. And I'm stating that lightly. The majority of the decisions we make are impulsive, like children, without understanding the grave consequences they'll have on the future generations. The Most High is saying, no, nah, you can't be impulsive. One must be patient, like I'm patient. With patience, possess ye your soul. Mm -hmm. You can't be impulsive. You can't be tempted into scenarios because at the end of the day, these people that are edging you to do something are not going to be there through the whole fall and, and they're not going to repair your whole life to the point, you know, where you can see straight again. You will fall and they out. They're gone. <laughs> right? So we can't be in pay, uh, impulsive, but patient on in this race. Right? Mm -hmm. What else you have at the lawyer? Yes, sir. Continuing on that point, this is so Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 15 and 11. Yes. Through uh, 17. Yeah. Say not thou when say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away. Don't ever say it's through the most high that you fell away. Try to blame God. Read. For thou oughtest not to do the things that he hateth. Because we knew better. But we made an excuse to fulfill the lust of our flesh. We knew better. Hmm. See? Come on. Verse 12. Say not thou... He have caused me to err. And don't say it's the most high that calls you to err. Never that. Come on. 
For he have no need of the sinful man. Because he has no need for the sinful man. He gave us the law, folks. He gave us the law and said, you were supposed to measure the requirements of mm -hmm. your, your requirements with me mm -hmm. as far as this path was concerned. Mm -hmm. And how many times it happens where the fall happens and something grave happens and we say, well, God works in mysterious ways. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what God are you talking about? Mm -hmm. No, don't try to bring the most high in. The most high is clear concerning his law and the requirements of those who serve him. Mm -hmm. Read. Verse 13. The Lord hateth all abominations, and they that fear the most high love it not. The most high hate all abominations. Anything unlawful, the most high hates. So you can't make a choice to do what the Most High hates and try to bring him in to excuse your choice. That's your choice. That's how, These are our choices. Mm -hmm. He's like, listen, don't try to equate me with sin at all. Mm -hmm. This is going to say that. Come on. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. He himself made man from the beginning and left him in the hand of his counsel. Come on. If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform the acceptable faithfulness. He have set fire and water before thee. He have set fire and water before thee. He's talking about what? That path. Because on the in the middle of that fire and water is a path. Mm -hmm. Read. He have set fire and water before thee. Stretch forth thy hand unto whether thou wilt. Come on. Before man is life and death, and whether him liketh shall be given him. So in other words, the most I put both before us. So you have to choose one and whatever you choose will determine your path. And what's deep in you bringing that out of the lawyer is this. The, the majority of life choices we make leads to either one or the other. Mm. There's no in between. There's no middle place. The majority of the choices we make will lead to life everlasting or death. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can like I'm looking like like I see you online and I see some of the things. And, and, you know, sometimes I try not to let that affect me. Negatively, seeing seeing how our people perpetually is living the curse. And as a result of it. Our children are suffering in these communities. We make a choice. With a person that, that, that there's red flags all over the place concerning this person. And the example I can make, just one small example. I, I said I'm going to try, mm -hmm. I'm going to use one example. Mm -hmm. You will meet a person. You will meet a guy. And this guy has children all over the place. And for some reason, you will think what he did to those other women is not going to happen to me. Or vice versa. See, that's that's showing a lack of what we would call spiritual maturity. <laughs> he told someone else he loved he loved them. Everything you you're hearing, he said over and over again, and it work and it works. So there's a demographic that this guy targets, knowing. He can, he can lead, he can do what? Do what he's doing. But at the end of the day, what happens? That child grow up dysfunctional and becomes a terror within our communities with no one to guide them and give that child the wisdom that was needed. And that be that young man who could have grown up and became a prophet, a teacher, something constructive, something right. That choice, you didn't see it at that time, was leading to death. Because you brought that one guy in the community, 
10, 15 people are dead now by the hands of your son or more if he decided to go to the streets and sell crack. And then the daughter becomes what? Dysfunctional. She believed that the way mom brought me in the world is normal. And she will bring forth more sons like that who become what? Recruits in Satan's army to destroy us inwardly. See that? Our choices will either lead left or right. It's life or death. I'm just using this one example. Right? Right? 